For me, these two machines go together. They are two of the three original computers that I got from my dad and that he used back in the day. The third one is this PowerBook 100 for another video. Before my dad got the PowerBook, this computer was his portable driver for the road, the Z88. The Macintosh SE and the Z88 made for a powerful combination and completed each other nicely, as we will see. I remember seeing uh, this book in my dad's study, being sorely disappointed about the contents, but uh, I'm more excited about it now. And uh, look, Sir Clive himself seems to have liked it. Well, welcome to another Retro Tech Guy video. Today we're looking at the Z88, formerly known as the Cambridge Z88, which was released in 1987 by Clive Sinclair's company, Cambridge Computer, after he had sold the more iconic Sinclair Research to Amstrad in April of 1986. Clive Sinclair is, of course, more known as the father of the ZX81 and the ZX Spectrum from 1981 and 1982, respectively. Taken that the Z88 came out in 1987, the specifications were not so impressive. A similar Zilog Z80 processor was used already in the ZX81, but the Z88 used a more power efficient version, the CMOS Z80A, clocked at 3.2768 MHz. The Z88 came with 32 kilobytes of RAM, as well as with 128 kilobyte ROM. The memory could be expanded in the three memory card slots that we'll be taking a closer look at. The main selling point was the unit's portability. Uh, the built-in screen is an eight-line 64 times 640 super twisted pneumatic display with rather good contrast, actually. The dimensions of the computer is very similar to an E4 paper. The Z88 can be powered by this chunky power supply, but uh, it can also be battery powered. In fact, you could get up to 20 hours of work done with just four AA batteries, and it weighs less than one kilo. The computer seems to have gotten mixed reviews back in the day, mainly because of its older technology and lack of compatibility with other systems. But it was the smallest laptop to date. And this review from PC Magazine from April 1988 descends to downright Brit bashing with what seems like a grievance that the Z88 is not a PC. At this point in the 80s, there also seems to have been a wariness of what Clive Sinclair had to offer. Although the package value of hardware and software is emphasized in this ad, the same ad also makes a point of showing how the Z88 works with both the Macintosh and the IBM PC. This seems to get to the heart of the matter with the Z88. As one positive reviewer puts it, the Z88 is like a boxer in a cage, both powerful and penned in at the same time. The same reviewer writes that I want one of my own and I wouldn't dare to use the Z88 as my only computer. Because of the lack of drive support, the user had to depend on the electronic storage in EPROM on the unit. When the EPROM was full, there was no more storage unless you bought this special EPROM eraser, which wiped the whole uh, EPROM. This made the Z88 best as a companion machine to go along with uh, a stationary computer at home, such as a PC or a Macintosh. And this is what we'll be looking at for the Macintosh. Taking a closer look at the computer, the keyboard is reminiscent of uh, earlier Sinclair rubber keyboards, but uh, this one is full size and uh, not terrible actually. There is some travel, you can actually feel that uh, the key is being typed. Not totally where they enter in the space key, but uh, for the other key, keys you actually feel it and uh, it's very silent. Here there's a conveniently placed uh, shorthand to some commands that uh, we'll be trying out later. Have these uh, two special function keys, the uh, square and the, the diamond. Here in the front are the memory slots. There is a 128K RAM cartridge alongside the built-in 32K. The Z88 
to uh, Mac cartridge and a 256 erasable semi-permanent storage cartridge, the Eprom. Uh, I also have another Eprom, uh, the same size storage, if, uh, if this one would run out. Um, on the side, there is the, uh, the 9-pin um, RS-232 port. And uh, on the other side, we have uh, a little contrast control and uh, the power jack. And uh, that's it. No ports uh, on the back. And uh, turning it around, um, we see that uh, here is that excellent uh, battery hatch for um, four AA batteries. And uh, uh, that is pretty excellent. My dad was an avid user of the Z88, and uh, he was a member of the Users Club, apparently, member 5,327. And uh, a uh, six-issue subscription costed £13 back in the day, apparently. And uh, here are three membership magazines, three issues uh, from 1991, apparently. Um, the Z88 Eprom with different uh, things going on, and... Uh, here are some back issues, and according to this, then I don't know. It was uh, issued from 1987, and uh, then it was issued at least this stretches until uh, May June 1992. But uh, yeah. Maybe it did continue. Wow, new Z88 PCBs could be ordered there. This is interesting. Um, yeah, and uh, what kind of things did they have? Club addresses, tutorial, newsline, queries, a promo raiser information. Yeah, I'm sure this would be very, would have been very interesting. Um, lead battery monitor. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I also found this. There's a Z88 Users Club notes on printing. Pretty, pretty hefty printout um, that my dad had. And uh, this Z88 tutorial <laughs> that uh, actually um, is in Swedish. But uh, yeah, so some nice. Um, documentation here and uh, some historical value, but uh, maybe, but uh, certainly some personal um, value uh, for me. I'm pretty sure I saw this official manual in my dad's bookshelf as a child, but I can't seem to find it now. But uh, you can find it over on archive.org, link in the description, and uh, links also to the other articles mentioned. This is a rather nice uh, plastic uh, cover that goes on top of the Z88 and protects the screen and the keyboard from being pressed as you turn it on by pressing the shift buttons at the same time. And uh, this uh, four leather um, bag is actually holding up quite nicely and uh, yeah, fit nice in a briefcase or my rugsack. And uh, this is the uh, original packaging that the Z88 came with. Cambridge that little carrier handle as well. So we turn the Z88 on by pressing both shift buttons at the same time and uh, let's have a look at some of the function. There's a diary, pipe dream. If we click on pipe dream, we see that this is the sort of word processor app and uh, pressing menu, we can go through the different menus there, blocks, different cursor commands, edit the text, files for loading and saving, layout options, and uh, the different commands that go with it, and uh, yeah, other options. So that's Pipe Dream, and uh, we'll be looking at that later. There's also, of course, uh, Basic. And this is the uh, BBC uh, Basic, as we can see. And uh, yeah, let's t type the obligatory um, program to, <laughs> to make sure this really is uh, basic. 
and uh, yeah this really is basic then isn't it and we'll escape out of that and uh, go back to the index there is a calculator app with uh, yeah, a calculator there on the screen and a conversion uh, utility there on the right useful is a calendar and uh, see that we're in January 1988 at the moment it's period appropriate there's a clock it's there in 1988 of course and uh, what else have we got we have the uh, an alarm function a filer for saving files print editor a panel here in the panel there are some uh, different settings that one can set and we can uh, set the uh, software key click when we press the uh, buttons we get a little uh, tone from the beeper so the uh, keyboard is very silent and uh, of course this was great uh, my dad had been saying that it was great when he was in libraries back in the day and uh, you know old computers sounded a lot but this was very silent and of course uh, he didn't use this clicker function I'm sure and uh, there's a terminal application for communicating with uh, other uh, units there on the side with the RS232 and import export utility and link that we'll be using uh, to connect to the Mac and uh, these are the recently used things there on the right so um, if we go down to pipe dream and click enter we see this little text that I wrote and uh, we'll be using this to uh, transfer over to the Mac here we are then uh, let's turn the computer on and we have the serial cable uh, plugged in there on the right and uh, what we have to do is we have to press um, diamond FS for file save we enter the name and uh, it's saved now we press uh, square L there for link and so the link utility is running and I have the serial cable connected to my Macintosh SC over there and uh, I've installed the Z88 to Mac utility there so um, let's uh, click that open and uh, once this opens we will be able to transfer the documents. We see there's Z88, there's RAM 0 and RAM 1. And there is my document hello that I uh, wrote. We don't need a conversion here. We just click the hello and we press the transfer. And it will transfer the document then over into the folder on the Z88 to Mac. It's a folder called Z88 to Mac on my Macintosh SE then. And uh, then we can close the utility. And uh, let's open Mac right. That I have uh, here and uh, let's see if we can actually open the document that I wrote on the Z88 uh, on this Macintosh SE and uh, here's the folder and here we have hello let's uh, open it and uh, there's a little conversion going on then but uh, yeah there we have it there's some garbled stuff in the beginning and on the bottom line but that is actually the text Ahead that I wrote on the Z88 so yeah I will be using this Z88 out in the wild I can come and then I can come back and uh, save it to my Macintosh SE pretty awesome lightweight computer and uh, useful like this as well I can edit it in the SE and uh, print it excellent here we can save it as a uh, Mac in and here we can save it as a Mac write file uh, for uh, further editing for example here there are 11 screws on the back uh, for opening this and uh, here it is opened we can see that this is actually uh, an older machine with all the little uh, resistors but there's a Zilog chip here's a Swedish uh, ROM then for the character set and all the resistors so yeah, this is the PCB, pretty simple. And there are the uh, slots for the cartridges, the crystal oscillator, the beeper, and the uh, serial port up there to the right, the ribbon cable to the uh, screen, and uh, the uh, battery uh, compartment there under the screen. 
and uh, here is uh, the Z88 to Mac cartridge and it just slots in like this uh, and then uh, there's this little uh, visor that flips up and uh, it, that presses a button when it's down so uh, the computer sort of turns off when you flip that down and turns on again when you uh, flip it up again. The Z88 sure is a simple machine and to say that much has happened in portable computing since 1987 is of course a gross understatement. Yet my MacBook Pro weighs considerably more than the 900 gram something of the Z88 and one doesn't get much done with four AA batteries these days. And the Z88 is actually more than just an oversized bag calculator. The full size keyboard makes it actually doable to type with for longer periods. I should be using this more often. And that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, do hit that like button. And if you'd like more retro computing coming your way, do consider subscribing to the channel. And thank you for watching. Bye.